Hey, what is going on, you boring beautiful? So, Charizard X is basically the only real new archetype to come out of Obsidian Flames. Thankfully, at the very least, there's a bunch of different ways to play the deck. The most popular one being the Arceus, P Arceus Pidgeot. There's a bunch of different Lost Zone builds that did pretty well at the Barcelona Special Event. And then there's this build, the Curlia Galade build that got top eight at Champions League Yokohama, piloted by Yusuke. Mihashi, I hope I got close to how to pronounce that, but this build is super, super cool. I tried it out recently on the stream. I don't have quite all the cards that are in this exact 60. Uh, the Charmanders, the 70 HP Charmanders do come out of 151, I believe. So we'll be getting them literally later today or access to them later today on PDCG Live. So I was playing this the other day on the stream. 151 is not quite out yet, but will be actually out later today as I'm like putting this video out there for you all to check out. Uh, and this build was super cool. I really, really enjoyed this build. There's a couple things I'm a little bit skeptical about at first, but I just took it for what it was, took the exact 60 and played around with it. The things that I was like a little bit like, eh, is this going to work out? Am I going to need more of this, less of this, whatever it might be, uh, was only three Charmander. But to be honest, Charizard, a one Charizard in itself, is such a huge threat and so hard to deal with. You don't really need four Charmander, to be honest. Like you get one candy Charizard out there with a Charmander on your bench, and if they do deal with that Charizard EX, you have that backup Charmander to become a Charmeleon into a Charizard or to be rare, rare candy into a new Charizard. And the other thing was maybe a fourth Curlia, but once again, as I played with the deck a little bit more, definitely did not feel a need for a fourth Curlia either. So Charizard X, of course, is the main and pretty much only attacker in this deck. We'll talk about that reversal energy here in just a second, though. But then the draw support line or the support line in this deck is the question for Charizard. What do you play as the support Pokemon in the deck? Like I said, there's the Arceus and, Arceus and Pidgeot. There's the Lost Zone builds that use Comfy and Colrus, and sometimes that are, have the ability to attack with like the Greninja and Sableye in there. Uh, and then there's this build that has Curlia with Refinement, which is of course a great draw support Pokemon with the Gallade with the Buddy Catch ability that allows you to search your deck for a supporter card once during your turn. And to be honest, this acts very similarly to the Pidgeot in this build, the way Pidgeot acts in the Pidgeot build, because generally most of the time you're using that quick search from the Pidgeot to go find a boss's orders or an Iono. Not all the time, but it felt like a lot of the time that's what you're going to look for. And of course, we have the support of the Mew with the Mysterious Tail in here as well. And it is amplified a little bit in this build compared to some of the other builds because there is jet energy in here for jet energy. So turn one, a little bit easier to get the Mew into the active and potentially even use two Mew on the first turn. Bench one, jet it up into the active and then retreat it into a separate Mew to go help search for, I don't know, Battle VIP Pass or Ultra Ball or a Candy, whatever it might be. And later in the game, as it progresses, we've got a Charizard EX in our active, but we want to find an item card for the turn or just like utilize our resources a little bit more efficiently. We can jet a Mew up into the active, use the Mysterious Tail, and then retreat it back into the Charizard and attack for turn. So that's been really cool and really smooth so far. Also, the jet energy in here not only allows us to consistently use the Mysterious Tail throughout a game, but it's also our switch and like pivot cards in the deck because the Curly has got two retreat costs. The Glade has two retreat costs. Even something like the Manaphy or the Mew itself having the one retreat cost, we need ways to move those sometimes as well. So the Jet fills that role very, very well. It's effectively a switch card and also allows us to aggressively use the Mysterious Tail. So it's really, really smooth. And yeah, it just works out really, really well. So this build has felt insanely... It's actually the best any of the Charizard builds that I played with have felt so far. This has felt the best of all the Charizard builds that I've played with so far has been this build with the Glade, which really surprised me. I thought it would feel okay as far as the Charizard deck goes, but it definitely has felt the best out of all of them that I've played with so far. I'm not really a big fan of the Arceus, Arceus Pidgeot build. That one I'm definitely not a big fan of. The Lost Zone stuff is okay, but Lost Zone feels really fluky when you have a stage two with rare candies in there. But yeah, this Curlia Mew Gallade build has felt the smoothest of all of them. Of course, your options are very limited with this build. The only attacker we really have in here is the Charizard, except for the one of Reversal Energy, which does allow us to attack with the Gallade with that Swirling Slice Attack 160, and then we move an Energy from this Pokemon to one of our bench Pokemon for Psychic Colors Colors. So the one of Reversal Energy does allow us to attack with Gallade. To be honest, I haven't attacked with the Gallade yet, but I have used the Slap on a Curlia to actually KO a Shiny Arcana Gardevoir that when it KO'd one of my Charizard EXs. So I've used Slap more than I've used Swirling Slice, but the potential is definitely there for the Gallade. I've just ended up using Slap more than I've used Swords. I haven't played that many games with this deck. For the rest of the deck, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing too crazy. Um, for Iona, of course, you see that in most Charizard decks that aren't Lost Zone builds. A couple research, just want to make sure we find a draw supporter early and often. Boss's Orders, of course, like I said, very important card. It feels like with Charizard decks in general, usually, because we're not wanting to KO in their active early on. 
as much as we would like. We got to be bossing and KOing something else until we get to the point where our opponent's drawn enough prize cards that we are want to KO in their active Pokemon. So two boss in here alongside a Palpat as well so we can gain more bosses. Honestly, after playing with this list though, I think the deck should just play probably three boss or four boss because sometimes you can't quite get to the pal pad and you're out of boss in the deck because maybe one's prized or you played a research early and you use the boss you're out of boss there's nothing to buddy catch for anymore and you really want to boss that turn as opposed to punching their active so i could definitely see just actually cutting the pal pad straight up for another boss i never felt like i wanted more than four iono you definitely want three to four boss it almost feels like in some games that's only if you have like an unfortunate ultra ball or research though so i could definitely see cutting the pal pad for a third boss and then actually maybe cutting another card in here for a fourth boss. Four Rick Candy, of course. We got our Charizard deck, four Battle of IP Pals, four Level Ball, and three Ultra Ball for our Pokemon Search. One Heavy Ball in here. The Heavy Ball, honestly, maybe just should be a fourth Ch Charmander. Prizing a Ralt isn't a big deal. Prizing a Manaphy can be a big deal. And prizing the second Mew can also feel a little bit unfortunate at times. But I've definitely had a couple games where I prized the third Charmander. And I was able to find my Heavy Ball or a Super Rod before I was uh, kind of locked out of Charizards in play. So it never really came up where I actually got locked out of Charizards in play. So maybe the flexibility of the Heavy Ball is a little bit better. But I could see the Heavy Ball just becoming a 4 Charmander to make that a little bit smoother overall. Two Super Rod. Definitely need to play two Super Rod. I've seen some Treasure lists with one Super Rod. I think those are fine probably. But in this build specifically, we're so heavily reliant on Charizard uh, as our main attacker. Finding Super Rod super important. And uh, yeah, it's like our only attacker in the deck. One Lost Vacuum. We do need a decent amount of Stadium Bumps to get around Path to the Peak. We do have two Artisan in here. Helps us in the early game find more of our basic Pokemon more consistently. This deck is really consistent at setting up basic Pokemon turns one from there things can feel a little fragile but after we set up that first charge we usually cook them for the rest of the game and then just need to chain our charizards from there but it's nice to have an item out to bumping pat to the peak that way we can use the mysterious tail on the mew to find vacuum vacuum bumps pat to the peak we candy our charizard in play we use our what is it called infernal rain get our energy in play and then we're attacking for turn with our charizard so the vacuum is sick i would maybe even consider including a second lost vacuum if path to, path to the peak got popular enough in a build like this and then for the energy count six fire energy this has felt like almost not enough so i don't think i'd ever go down to five fire energy six feels like it's probably perfect but you wouldn't mind a seventh is how it's felt so far so is how it's felt so far so i want to go to less than five unless you like went to five for a third super rod i could see that being reasonable um but yeah six has felt very very solid and then the forge energy like i explained earlier allows us to aggressively use mysterious tail but then also make sure none of our curlia or galite or anything like that gets stuck in the active it's our switch card as well as our pivot card for the mew it just it just works it looks a little weird um and it does play out a little funky sometimes but it just it just does kind of work because it does like it acting as like our switch card plus our way to get and utilize mew into the active it just yeah i don't know it just works but anyways like i said this charizard build is super sick it definitely has felt the best out of all the charizard ex decks i have played with so far and with that said let's go and let's get some action get some gameplay so you all can learn how to play this deck along with me let's get into it up oh, if we set up we win right it's like a setup and win matchup for sure <clears throat> I think this deck should maybe play another boss instead of a pal pad to be honest i don't know if we really need more than three boss ever um i think we do want access to three boss but i don't know if we ever need more than three so i think instead of the pal pad it maybe should just play another boss can i never really want to recover researcher i don't know all right what do we prize charmander curlia curlia mew charmander charmeleon prize azard or one prize of research, two boss, prize a level ball, prize one or candy, prize a level ball, ultra ball, those are there, or energy there to in hand. Did I mess something up there? No, I don't think so. Okay. We have candy Zard already in hand. <clears throat> I only want a candy zard where I can get a knockout. I'm really hoping for a battle VIP pass here. And do I oh that's tough. Do I go get another Charmander? Or do I keep this around for a Curlia draw power? Man, I don't know. I'm gonna pass. If they take a KO here, we're still in a fine spot, so. Like if they go boss KO Charmander, as long as I can get down double Charmander next turn, it's not terrible i don't like it but yeah it'll be like okay and we can go like super rod <clears throat> yeah we can go like ooh, the path to the peak 
Sheesh. Okay, well, I'm definitely happier I played it this well. Yeah, no, I'm content with how I played that overall. Well, the, with how it went, this is probably the better way for it to end up. But oh, yeah, still really, and they just kind of gave me everything I could ever want here in this hand, to be honest. Curly, curly, set up Charmander, curly, curly. I don't. I mean, I guess the only other thing I'd want would be like artisan. Like if the boss was an artisan, that'd be a little bit better. But can't complain with this draw, to be honest. Blue top deck, candy. I think I just play the Iono here. <clears throat> I could dig for the char. I would need charge our plus stadium. It's kind of like uh, unrealistic. So I think we should do this. Yeah. Yeah. The no boss on Mander was definitely big. Honestly, evolving to Charmeleon would be nice. I don't really want to get rid of the Curlia. I don't want to get rid of the Charizard. I don't really want to get rid of the Palpat either. That's good. Charmander. Do want to get rid of the maybe I do get rid of the curly and I get rid of the jet energy just fine here I think. Okay. Throw down a Ralts. Jet up the Ralts. Charmander, Charmeleon. And then I should even I think I should even go as far as pal padding that in because I wouldn't mind top decking that. <clears throat> I'll just pass from there. Seems fine. If they knock out, well, hopefully they don't have boss. Well. Yeah, hopefully they don't have boss here to be honest. Well, I mean, it's not that bad if they have boss. If they do have, I mean, I don't want them to have boss. Um, The doof? Yeah, I want them. I don't want them to have boss here. But if they have it, we get the third curly in play. We then need to find rare candy and a, a stadium bump as opposed to just a stadium bump. But maybe I should have tried to attack. Well, no, that's how I got. I got the Ralts into the active because of Jet. So that really wouldn't have worked out the other way, actually. To be honest, if they get a bravery charm when they're active, that's probably the most annoying thing. Because then I don't actually, I don't actually KO the Raikou. No, but I could just punch it, and then I could vacuum it later, and that'd be fine. And they're currently bench locked, so they can't even use a Raichu now. They probably shouldn't have benched the Raikou or the Maridon. I don't probably, I actually don't know which one should have been benched. But now they don't have a threat of Maridon next turn, or they don't have a threat of Raichu next turn. If I do end up on that play, to be honest, where I just like punch. Well, I guess they, they're probably not thinking that far ahead though. And it honestly might not matter. If I can't even find a stadium bump here, we're in big trouble, so. Okay. They ever use the forest? I guess they are. What do they want that back? Oh, the bravery. I guess they could go with the bravery charm. But if my vacuum is not prized, which I'm pretty sure it's not, then I can just punch their active Raikou for turn and get the vacuum next turn. But then I also need to combo that with boss as well. Yeah, I don't really mind the bravery charm this turn, to be honest. As long as I can actually find an artisan, because otherwise I might have to... If I got to vacuum the path, that wouldn't be very good. All right. Vacuuming path won't be great. Now, now I'll probably give up the Curlia here. We'll see what we top deck though. Ooh. I don't want to get rid of the Curlia. All right, we're gonna get rid of the Jet Energy instead. Although Jet to Mew would be good to pull off a Mew. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so the play's happening like I said it was gonna, or it could happen. How many energy are in here? A lot. Um, okay, Artisan. What's left in here? I have four fires, which is enough for back-to-back -back Charizards. Okay. Is the vacuum in here though, actually? It is, okay. So we can get the Mew. <clears throat> but I'm gonna have to get rid of the Super Rod, which I think I am fine with. Oh, I messed up. Did not get punished. Let's go. <laughs> I still have all the fire energy in the deck that I could have thin out of the deck first. Don't mind me, just throw one over here. All right, grab these and then Oh, is the other super rod not in here? Okay, that should be fine though, still. One, two, one. Level ball for Manaphy to put on the bottom of the deck. Leave the Charmander in there, because if they boss KO the Charmander, I need to bench another Charmander, bench Rolts. Then play Iono, just drop down to four. But yeah, we don't have to KO this. Actually, I almost don't want to KO this, because actually this like gives me the win by not KOing this, to be honest. Um. I don't know if I want to set up a Galate here. I'm just going to go ahead and say it's correct. And not the, the draw power from the refinements is pretty important. So I can find the vacuum. I don't need to do the vacuum next turn, though. I could just leave this in play. That way they can't Iono me too low, to be honest. Um, yeah, it actually might just be better to wait even longer. Because I don't want to get... I don't know about that. Well, yeah, I don't want to get Iono to two, right? That could be, like, annoying. I don't think I'm overly trying to get Iono to two. So I think it should be fine, actually. Um... You're only throwing to teach us the the way, right? Yeah, I'm just showing you what the potential misplays are, so you understand why they're misplays. Of course, of course. 
Yeah, I should have evolved to Charizard first, thin, th thin three energy out of the deck, so I had a higher chance of hitting other stuff. See, but the, them bench locking themselves was huge here, because if they had the Raichu return KO to my Charizard, that would have been tough, to be honest. If they had that play this turn, if they had the Raichu one hit KO on my Charizard, that could have made things pretty tough. I think we would have still been okay, but would definitely made things more complicated than I would have liked, so I'm glad it's going this way instead feeling way better about this yeah the question is just if i find the vacuum should i play the vacuum should i should i if i find the vacuum do i play the vacuum now is the question um the reason i wouldn't want to do that is i would get iono lower next turn but would that matter if i go boss ko this the vacuum this draw four prize cards candy charizard this turn no matter what two prizes they attack me with to knock me out well, they could knock me out with this. Well, they could hit me with this for 220. No, they, there's no... They don't have anything that can do 110 damage, right? Well, they have Zapdos, I guess. But how many generators are they down? Only two? I guess they could set up a Zapdos, theoretically, on the next turn. Return, knock me out. And then... But I would only need boss. And I'd have the Galleon in play to get me boss to win the game. Yeah. That's a lot of rare candy. Um, to be honest... I think we can thin out the deck here first. I have the boss in hand, so. And then we go play this Andy. Dark. Cause I don't need, oh, I didn't. So the problem with this, I guess is I don't guarantee set up the Galate or it's less likely to set up the Galate. But if I had started with the Curlias and if I draw into Galate or Charizard, then the Ultra Ball could find the other of the two. Um. Mm, okay, okay. I'm always playing the boss. Research could matter. Reversal energy could also matter. I also, to be honest, I didn't have to candy. I didn't have to candy out the Zard though either. I could have just left my board at only. I think I'm trolling in this one again, to be honest. Definitely do this. But yeah, because like, what if I just don't? I don't have to candy the Zard right now. But if I don't candy to Zard here, then I only have one project in play. So after they KO this, they have to go through a one project. So that could have bought me plus one turn to play the game. Yeah, that's probably trolling. You appreciate the 22 months there. Stark? Yeah, I think I... I think... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could have played that a little bit better for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think they will be hitting me with the two prize Pokemon this turn. The, the two prize Pokemon they should hit me with, though, is the Raikou. They should punch me with Raikou here. Um, Because, yeah. They should punch me with Raikou here, but... Now they did just bench lock themselves, so I don't have to worry about the potential of that Zapdos, at least. So it is just going to be the two prizes that are attacking me, because they don't want to not draw a prize card here. But now, once again, though, actually, if I don't take a knockout, they don't have room for Raichu on their bench anymore. And then I get plus one more turn to play the game. So now they kind of have thrown uh, again themselves, actually, by bench locking themselves. So th with no more threat of Raichu, I still have that extra turn to play the game here. But I'm just going to go ahead and play to try and get the... Um, the vacuum and i might even have the guaranteed vacuum here because i have curlia 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 iono and that's gonna see me what eight cards nine ten with the other one i'm drawing for turn that almost guarantees it i could send up the mew but i would just wait to like draw into the jet potentially and i do have one jet left i could like super hot energy back to the deck to increase my odds of trying to use the mew but i'm just gonna go ahead and send up the zard and we'll see what we top deck level ball do this that gets the curlia then so this can find the mander this can find the curlia now i only have 12 cards left in deck and so we're gonna see majority of them i wonder if i should you know at this point doesn't make any sense to shuffle the energy back in so i don't know and we do ko it if they drag we're doing 300 damage so and then we're seeing the major vast majority of the deck here there's the vacuum so this first then at this check this there's a galate in there then I can go to maximize deck thinning. Oh, wait, no, so there's, uh, this is actually incorrect because now I have to keep the vacuum. Well, no, 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 but I want to use a Curlia. Wait, no, 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 I have game in hand already. What the heck am I doing? <laughs> I thought I had to go further than that. I was like, I need more. I need more than the vacuum. I just need the vacuum. I just need the vacuum. Yeah, for some reason, I thought I needed more than that. I don't know why I thought I needed more than that. Yeah, never needed any more than that. I was like, I need a little more, though. That's going to be the big question is, do they play? Yeah, it looks like Lugia. They also have Luminion in play, which will be an easy first two prize cards for us to chase if we want to. I don't really love the idea of researching this hand away. 
mostly because it has a red candy in it, but we're probably going to research this hand away. I don't see myself holding on to this hand. We could try and keep it, but it's probably not worth it. Um, one question is like, do I set up the double Mew here? I probably will. Uh, my board could probably be double Mew. I'm going to try the double Mew and see if I regret it. We'll see like, we'll do, cause I definitely regret it in that last game we played, but I'm gonna try and go double Mew, double Mew, double Charmander, double Ralts is going to be my goal. And then if they KO a Mew, that opens up a bench space for probably a third Ralts over the third Charmander, but we could go one way or the other, depending on the situation. Um, and they don't have a very aggressive start either. So I don't think they're like boss KOing anything or anything like that. A question could be like, do I want to give them Artisan? I did draw pretty well here. So maybe I don't give them Artisan. I don't know how much I care. I did prize a Mew, so I guess that's not a possibility unless I get the, not a possibility unless I get the other thing. Artisan guarantees me the double Charmander. Like I said, I'm not scared of my Charmander getting boss KO'd. So we did prize a Mew, but if we get the heavy ball, then that fixes that. Or three. There's also the Charmeleon in here. So our candies aren't like that first rare candy is important, obviously, but followed up from that, the rare candies are a little bit less important. Not that we don't want to find them, but yeah, it won't be quite as, quite as relevant. Um, Artisan, one's in hand, fires, three, four. So we prize two fire. And honestly, I don't know what else we prize at all. The pal pads prize, no pal pads in hand, Gallades, Charizards, and we prize something. I don't know what the rest of the prize cards are. We prize heavy ball, that sucks. We can't get our Mew ever. Um, yeah, the question is, do I wanna give them Artisan? How much do I care if they have access to a one prize Pokemon? Probably not more than me setting up more. I'm gonna throw the Artisan out there. And then the fire energy, I don't really want to put it on the Mew for just to get removed from play. So I'll throw it on the Charmander and then we'll hit him with the research. We can use Arzon later because I do want to find the two Pokemon. So if I drawn into a Pokemon, that would have been better. There's a level ball in hand. Um, I don't really want to play the level ball though. So I'm just going to go Artisan to get a Charmander and then I'm going to use Mysterious Tail. So if this gets a Battle VIP pass, I would prefer to Battle VIP pass than say the level ball to become a Curlia. Ooh, there's a rare candy and an ultra ball, but I don't have anything to rare candy into besides a galley. I don't really feel like rare candy into a galley. So I could just go with a level ball instead, which I think I will do because I can just set up my board fully and then just play an Iono and just go from there. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab another Rolts. We'll throw that in play and go Curlia, level ball for Curlia. Then set up our Curlias and go from there. I could have taken the rare candy, but if I take the rare candy, that requires me to like draw into an ultra ball or a Charizard this turn. And I would rather just like play out my whole hand and then play the Iono and then draw into the candy combo. I feel like, cause if I have one, cause like, it feels like then you're like, I don't know, maybe this, that's my workout. It might statistically work out better to have taken the candy there and then just draw as much as I can. And then if I whiff the ultra ball of the charger, then just play the Iono. But I feel like just setting up as much this turn and then playing the Iono and trying drawing into both pieces is probably a little, a little bit higher odds of me actually pulling that off. I'm actually not sure to be honest. I could have also like, I don't really want to candy out of Galley before I play Iono either. Cause like candy out of Zard here initially is like, too important to do that i think it is the colorless build i wonder how much like that matters in this match it probably doesn't matter too much to be honest because we still just scale up better into the late game than them um so if i have to go chaos storm access i don't think i'm like too stressed about that um but they might be going read the wind here which is definitely pretty good for me if they're going read the wind here i'm down for some read the wind action we'll see what they got yeah it's read the wind okay so we'll just go yeah curlia level off curlia Box of Disaster. Okay. Guardy matchup, I guess. Although I think this deck already has a decent Guardy match. Ooh. I mean, there's nothing much to do. I guess I just lose a roll. It's not much to do about that at all. <clears throat> yeah. I don't really want to punch a Lugia. I'd rather boss KO something off the bench because I can always want to KO Lugia later on. But I guess we're just going to go for the... I don't really want to play Iono either, to be honest. So this is like weird now that I didn't take that rare candy a little bit. Now that we top deck the Ultra Ball though, I think we, yeah, I don't really wanna Iona them. So I think we're gonna try and dig through the deck first. Artisan, use the Artisan, grab myself something here. Another Ralts probably really is there. Yeah, so now I just need to find the right candy. So yeah, now we're just gonna like dig through the deck first. I could give up the Gallade. give up a jet energy but i don't want to run out of jet energy jet energies and run away some moose stuff also my second galley i believe is in the deck so how about you do i not want to ion over get an attack off this turn i guess is the question now i'll give up a jet energy i guess it's fine okay there's a red candy so now i can go ultra ball away actually to be honest i wouldn't mind getting a battle vip pass here to ultra ball away instead where the level ball works as well that gives me the charmeleon though which i would like to do 
So I can ultra ball away the Iono plus the, no, I need the, I don't need the jet to move. How many jet do I have left still then? Two as ways to move, okay. I don't need the jet. Level ball gets the Charmeleon. Okay, we can work with that. All right, do I want to keep, do I need both super rods? I, maybe I don't need both super rods. I'm going to keep them though. Is the super rod better than Iono, I guess is the question. Let me take one more last look at the deck real fast. Yeah, both jets are there. Okay, we'll grab the Charmeleon. I'll Ultra Ball away. Yeah, honestly, I don't think I need both super rods. Maybe I do, because I'm about to burn so much energy this turn. Charizard, because I need to put an energy on the active. Yeah, I'm gonna go through quite a few energy this turn. I still need to keep out, I need to keep around some ways to move my Pokemon around, because I can't just have them bossing Curlias and trapping them in the active. So two jet left should be enough, especially with them discarding a boss there. I should be good with two jets left. Should be adequate. I just got the punch this turn. It would have been nice to boss KO. Like, yeah, I just don't really want to hit their active and probably go after Luminian right now. But like, we can go for a two KO through the Lugia to begin with. We do play a vacuum as well. I don't know how important this box of disaster is going to be to remove, but we could try and remove the box of disaster at some point as well. I maybe should have tried to hold the Gallade. I don't, yeah, the Super Rods seem pretty important. So I think holding on to the Super Rod makes a ton of sense there. Uh, I remember you recommending Arc Dura to grind challenges and cups before Paldea. Is there any deck like that now? Any deck like Arc Dura that I well, I, the deck I recommend to most people right now is just Lugia. So I wouldn't say a deck like that. I guess maybe not really, but the deck that I would recommend for most players right now is just Lugia. And you can just go copy uh, Andrew Hedrick's list. And if there's like a lot of like a like a an abnormal amount of path to the peak locally you can just add like a second collapse stadium in for something um looks like they're maybe not cooking very well here they do need to retreat this lugia they can't leave it in the act unless they eventually have lugia so but they have the research they have the choice band on the charge so like bossing charizard so I, there's a couple things i want to do here i want to uh i actually don't we could ko in the active isn't like that important if i can still ko it later at some point they are down their Collapse Stadium. I don't know how many Collapse Stadium this build usually plays, but I feel like it's probably still just one. So like Boss KO Charizard. Oh wait, why am I thinking that? For some reason I was thinking Charizard one hit KOs us, but we have more than 280 HP. It's like, well, they got the Charizard with the Choice Belt. Charizard Choice Belt usually equals one hit KO. But in this situation, um, in this situation, I don't care about, I don't care about 280 damage. So boss KO Charizard is not like a huge concern, although it is a very efficient attack for them. Boss KO Archeops is kind of cool though. KOing their active is also kind of cool. Like I could just KO their active, that's probably fine. Um, they also have the Luminion on the bench that I can try and go after for like my last two prize cards potentially. Or I could even go for it a little bit earlier in that as well, to be honest. But taking this, yeah, taking this first initial knockout on the active is probably going to be correct. And then, yeah, I might not have to boss anything ever, to be honest. Boss KO Archeops is like tempting. But I should honestly just like probably KO the active and then boss KO Luminion as soon as I can before it like gets collapsed, potentially. I don't know if they actually play a second collapse, but it like wouldn't be a surprise if they did. So I would like to play around it before it potentially happens. Um, so that's probably just going to be the game plan here. They should probably actually maybe they leave the stadium in play because I can't abuse it this turn and they might want it around for one more turn to grab like another Shrox out of the deck or something. We'll see what they do. All right, that's fine with me. Uh, I could keep... No, let's get rid of it. I should play the Iono. I do want to see some new cards. Yeah, I want some new options. I'm down with it. We actually just don't have that many cards left in our deck already, to be honest. There's only 20 cards left. That's kind of crazy. Um, is there an energy left? The fire. There's no fire energy left in my deck. I want to save the... I want to use the rod after. Okay. We're in a pretty good spot here, I feel like. I don't really want to evolve this to it, the, this Charizard yet. I do need to shuffle the deck, though. Not really. I could actually dig down, and then you would be able to find the Super Rod. So I think we're just chilling. And then... Yeah, burning Darkness. A knockout. I think this is fine. Take this Knockout. We have the Vacuum. I could have played the Vacuum, maybe. Vacuumed away Research and got, actually got rid of that. But maybe I'll wait. Well, I could have done that right now, to be honest. I think doing that right now is probably not a huge deal. I guess the question would just be, do they play multiple boxes of Disaster? <clears throat> I doubt they play multiple boxes of Disaster, but I guess they could. Yeah, they could play multiple boxes of Disaster. And if they do that, vacuuming it right now wouldn't have made too big of a difference if they get the other one. Or if I know they have multiple, I wouldn't want to vacuum it yet. Yeah, going to this next round, I think it is just going to be 
vacuum the box boss ko and then i should just win the prize trade because even if they set up like a weird deer on the following turn and want to ko me then i should respond with another charizard and i win the only thing that might be annoying this turn well getting i owned here would be could be annoying for sure getting i owned would be annoying and then yeah getting an i would be annoying if i said my charizard well my charizard could get one well if i kill their shrinks my charizard's not getting one to ko'd because i don't think they would have enough energy to actually want to ko me even with a weird deer so if i just ko the active weird deers not want to ko me i don't think well, sometimes it do be swinging. But ideally, we just get a Charizard and a Charmander down next turn, so we're not really afraid of anything. So the goal next turn is find Super Rod, get down Charizard, get down Charmander, vacuum boss KO Luminion. If they respond with a Weird Deer KO, because at that point I'm not KOing their Shrunk, so I'm not removing energy for play, uh, then we just win because we just go another Charizard after that, and the game's just over. Um, why wouldn't I evolve to the Charmeleon? Because I have no energy in deck. So I want to be able to get the Super Rod first, then evolve to pull the energy out that I can guarantee my attachment. If I find the Super Rod, I may be guaranteed to find the energy anyway, so I could have just evolved. But yeah, if I even just had one energy in my deck, I would have uh, I would have evolved there to get the energy out of the deck. But I don't have any energy in the deck right now, so I didn't evolve. It would have also been maybe reasonable to evolve as well, to be honest, because I did prize two energy and I was drawing two prize cards here. So maybe I should have... Um, oh, my reversal energy was prized. I maybe should have just gone ahead and evolved anyways, because I was drawing two prize cards and there was two fire energy prized. But if, but if I can get the Iono, that's what I'm kind of like playing around more so than anything. Because if I don't get Iono this turn, I don't really care. Um, are they actually going for the Weird Deer? Dude, what? So many boxes of disaster. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, this is... Oh, that's a lot of stuff that just happened, to be honest. Okay. Um, all right. All right, so we're guaranteed to find the Super Rod. If I just use Mew, we guaranteed to see the Super Rod. And I have the boss in hand. But my bo my vacuum, not my box of disaster, my vacuum to get rid of the box of disaster is on the bottom of the deck. But if I want to KO the weird deer, even if I take 80 damage back, the Charizard could return KO, but then I could just boss KO Luminion and win. But if I remove the box of disaster, I don't have to worry about anything. Um, but I can guarantee draw into the Super Rod if I just go refinement, refinement, refinement. And then I could use this afterwards to try and find the vacuum. I guess that's probably the better play of the two, to be honest. So I can go refinement, refinement, refinement. I need to keep a candy around. If I'm bossing this turn, I'm not Ionoing this turn. No matter what, just bossing that is like really good. So we get rid of this. There's the super rod now. I could evolve into the Gallade. Use Gallade. Thin a card out of the deck. This seems fine. Buddy catch. I have the boss for this turn, so I'm gonna grab the research to potentially vacuum the research away. Or I guess I it's a refinement target. Refinement the research more i can't see any more cards <clears throat> let's just go with the mysterious tail hope for the vacuum pretty good decent odds of hitting dude okay um not a huge deal i run the ship rod we can still just go boss knockout boss knockout so charmander down super rod uh charizard double fire probably Do I even care about the Charizard? Just take triple fire and thin the whole deck out of the cards that I put into the deck. But I'm gonna need a Charizard on the next turn to combo with a Rare Candy, so that would make if I got Ion it again, then I'd probably want this. What if they just well, if I get rid of the weird ear? They're four probably if I get rid of the weird ear. I think if I ever should attack something else instead of the I don't have to go for the boss. Should I play it a little bit slower and not even boss KO? Is what I'm thinking right now. I'm not sure if that's correct though. Not getting the vacuum there just feels really bad. Because that makes my play super simple, I feel like. Maybe my play's not as complicated as I think, though, still. Um, double boss here, all, boss here always? No, that's not always correct. If I boss KO the weirder and then they have Collapse Stadium to get rid of Luminion or vice versa, then all of a sudden the two other two prizes are just not in play. And then do I lose from there is the question. I'm still feeling pretty comfortable about this play, so I'm just going to go for it, but... Assuming something is always something all the time... Uh, no matter what, it's how you end up with losses when you shouldn't. It's how you just easily walk into mistakes. You always want to like second guess yourself. Um, so there is a Charizard in the deck right now, right? So I could just play this other super to just get a fire energy, but I might want to get actually, well, there should be a fire energy coming off the prize cards, to be honest. I'm going to go ahead and not play the super rod right here. I think it's probably better. We'll play for the, um, Play for the double boss but yeah now the charizard comes up and knocks me out 
doing something something all the time yeah assuming that you're always supposed to do something if something appears it's just not like there's nothing in pokemon that's ever like you should always do it no matter what well that's not true like um give me boss lum here and why want to keep weird ear so they don't bump it and you win on prize trade well because i could have gone like boss ko archaeops not put the extra damage on myself so it's radiant charizard doesn't ko me that forces them into a weird ear probably using the rest of their energy and deck to respond to my charizard and then i go charizard ko their weird ear win but now my opponent could possibly go well i guess removing the weird ear removes their only threat of a two hit knockout though possibly unless they play two weird ear but now my opponent could go like bench a pokemon collapse stadium give her a little mini and play on a knockout and then i could whiff like candy charizard or something or they could play a second weird ear and second weird ear ko me um but if I had went like boss KO this Archaeops with two energy, I remove one of their ways to accelerate energy into play as well as removing two of their energy. Or even just honestly charge our KO the Snorlax was eh, maybe not about the same thing. This would provide more energy overall through a primal server. So boss KO this instead. I don't hit myself for 80 damage, which means the Charizard can't KO my Charizard EX. And then the only way to want to KO a two prize this turn would be a weirder with probably the rest of their energy in their deck. They KO me. I go down to three prize cards instead of two, so I don't hurts me less. And then I go candy Charizard KO weirder, and then the Charizard can't respond to my Charizard anymore. But now if they collapse stadium this away, I don't know, it just feels a little bit more awkward this way. But it probably doesn't matter overall, to be honest. It probably doesn't matter overall. It's probably this about the same thing. It's probably about the same thing. I think this is still probably a fine line to take. But they probably don't play too weird here. They probably don't play too weird here. That's what I was the only thing I was thinking about. But And if they do collapse away the Luminia, that's probably not a big deal either. Um But yeah, I guess we just win. I don't think we we lose anymore here. That's game. But I did pause to think about it. Yeah. But just because you have access to Boston C2, two, two prizes in play, it doesn't mean, like, you just don't... The idea behind, like, you just make sure... Just don't tunnel vision. Just don't tunnel vision. Basically, yeah. Just don't tunnel vision. You don't have to tunnel vision. Don't tunnel vision. Popping and thinking for a second can be, like, a big difference between, like, winning or losing a game. So... You want to make sure you try and think of those other outlying plays as much as you can as long as you have like the time allotted to actually do it so that way you don't get punished by like not seeing it and then that play that you could have done differently because like sure i'm probably almost guaranteed 100 percent the win here but if i could stop and make a play that plays around like my opponent having like some ridiculous combo card second collapse second weird ear and then i i win 100 percent of the time if they have that or if they don't have that i may as well play around the the small chance that they have some weird stuff like the Oh, I have to put this in play. I may as well play around that as well, right? There's no reason to not play around the outlier if my percent, my win percent is still the exact same, right? Because then when you run into the Lugia player who has four Roxanne in their deck, you beat them because you're like, well, I may as well play around that fourth Roxanne. I've seen three so far. But what if they have the four? You may as well play around it if it doesn't hurt your percent chance to win the game if they don't have it, of course. So that's kind of the question. But, and that's what I was kind of like coming to with the other line of players. Like, I don't think it hurts my chances to win this game to play around these outlier cards overall. But maybe it does. I don't know.